The purpose of this video is to introduce and demonstrate my fifth generation payphone controller. The difference between this controller and the previous versions, besides the color of the front panel and the illustration on the top, is the addition of a dial tone first function. The previous controllers were designed for coin first operation. This means that every prepay Western Electric coin line three slot from the 50A in 1912 to the touch tone 1234G and now dial tone first single slots can have coin control. Also included are every prepay three slot manufactured by Northern Electric, Automatic Electric, GTE, and Gray Manufacturing. Since central office payphone control is no longer available, the only way the payphones in this video are able to work like they did when they were in service is by using them with this controller. Without the controller, these payphones would be at best big, heavy, single line desk sets. At worst, they would be decorations hanging on a wall collecting dust. The four pay phones in this demonstration are from left to right, a Western Electric 233G prepay three slot, a Western Electric 1C2 dial tone first single slot, a Western Electric 1C1 rotary dial tone for a single slot, and finally a Western Electric 1D2 dial tone first single slot. The phone line to these pay phones is supplied by the controller. The controller is a small box with the red LED sitting on top of the 1C2. Next to the controller is an X-Link cellular gateway paired using Bluetooth to a cell phone on the other side of the room. The phone line output of the X-Link is split between the controller and an audio amplifier. Having phone line audio is necessary for this demonstration. The audio amplifier is out of the camera's view. Let's start the demonstration by defining what dial tone first is for those who don't know. Dial tone first allows someone to call for help using a pay phone without depositing any money in the phone. A maximum of three digits can be dialed. Examples are 911 and 411. If more than three digits are dialed, a recording will tell the caller that a deposit is required. Dial Tone First was introduced in 1966 and became universal in 1968. When these pay phones had central office control, dial digits were easy to detect and count. A pay phone controller is not a central office. It is only a device that mimics coin control to animate a pay phone. Because this controller is used for both touch tone and rotary pay phones, detecting and counting dial digits would be impossible to do at a realistic price. To keep the complexity, size, and cost of the controller at a minimum, instead of counting dial digits, the controller's dial tone first function is timed. When any payphone connected to the controller is taken off hook, the controller performs two functions. One, it sends dial tone to that payphone. Two, it allows that payphone's dial to operate for a preset length of time necessary to touch tone or dial three digits. After this time interval, the controller disables the payphone's dial. 
I'm going to demonstrate dial tone first by dialing 311 on each of these single slot payphones. 311 is a helpline for all the municipal services where I live. I'm going to keep dialing digits after the initial three and while the call is being connected to demonstrate that the payphones dial has, in, has been disabled by the controller. Next, I'm going to make two calls that require an initial deposit. The first is to a number I know is not in service. It was my business number for 20 years. It was never reassigned after I gave it up over 10 years ago. Since the call was never completed, the initial deposit will be returned. The second call is to a number I know will answer. I'm calling eBay. Keep an eye on the controller's LEDs. Notice how they change from coin return to coin collect when the call is answered and how the initial deposit is collected when I hang up. That's about it for dial tone first outgoing calls. You answer incoming calls like you normally would. I switch the controller from dial tone first to coin first. Switching from dial tone first to coin first is done by changing the position of a dip switch on the back of the controller. With the controller and coin first, I'm going to make a call using the Western Electric 233 three slot. I'm going to call eBay again. Watch how the LEDs on the controller change from coin return to coin collect when the call is answered. Now remember this is a 10 cent phone. Okay, that's the first nickel and the second nickel. Welcome to 
Well, no question, that's definitely coined first. Now, let's go back to the 1C2 dial tone first single slot. What's interesting about the 1C1 and 1C2 single slots is they could be built as either dial tone first or coin first. They could also be switched back and forth by moving jumpers in the phone. The Bell system's way of changing dial tone first 1C2 to a coin first 1C2, although not difficult, is tedious and time consuming. You have to completely dismantle the payphone and make more than 35 wiring changes. What is unique about my fifth generation controller is you don't have to do any of this if you want a coin first 1C1 or 1C2. The controller does it for you. When any dial tone first payphone that has the capability of being coin first is connected to the controller, it will automatically become coin first. The key word is capability. Since we know the controller is in the coin first mode, and both the 1C1 and 1C2 single slots seem to both fulfill the requirement of capability, they should now both be coin first. I'll try the 1C2 first. Let's see what happens. Well, let's try the same call with the 1C1. Well, it looks like both of these dial tone first single slots have mysteriously become coin first. Now I'll try the 1D2. Actually, no, I won't. Since D series payphones never had the capability of coin first operation, I know that payphone is out of service. Before ending this demonstration, I've already put the controller back in the dial tone first mode. Let's give that a try. Well, looks like all three single slots are back in the dial tone first mode.
Well, that's about it. I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. And have a great day.